Alrighty folks, I'm gonna be moving quickly through this tutorial because I'm gonna be talking through a few different ways to create elastic motion in DaVinci Resolve, including some keyframe less ways of doing it. And if you guys are good, at the very end, I'll show you a fun kind of mathematical way to model this because if you didn't know, it's a type of motion that gets modeled all the time in the real world and there's kind of a fun way to do it in DaVinci Resolve. But with that said, we've got a few working examples today and the first, is an image animation. And if I play this thing forward, you can see it kind of wiggles and then it comes to rest. So this was actually done through some hand animation. So what I will say is that at the end of the day, if you're trying to create a specific type of motion, more than likely you will have to hand animate it. And I'll show you what I mean in a little while. But sometimes doing something like that can be kind of tedious. So what I'm gonna show you guys how to do uh, is we'll call it the easier ish way to do it, maybe. But it is a bit convoluted if you've never used the modifiers before. So again, just a quick reminder, what I did is I made sure on my transform node that I've got set up that's moving whatever image or you know whatever property you've got set up here, because I only want this moving in the X direction, I right clicked on my center position, went modify width, and then ooh, X, Y path. And that gave us the modifier tab where we have all of our properties split up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uncheck this keyframe so that we've got nothing attached to our X position. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna right click on our X position, go modify width and anim curves. Now, if you're familiar with anim curves, you would know that what they do is it generates an animation over the length of your clip. It generates a change in a property based off of the, the composition duration and not off of a preset keyframe. Hopefully that makes sense. Quick demonstration, if I change my source from transition to duration, what's gonna happen is, is that for the duration of our composition, our X value is going to change. How much does it change? Well, the scale is one and the offset is zero. So if I wanted it to only go half of the way in, I could type in 0.5 and it would go to the middle of our frame. If I wanted to change the starting position, well, I could change that to 0.25 and it would start a quarter of the way on the frame and move in. So anim curves are really powerful. And if you want a better understanding and a breakdown, I highly, highly, highly recommend checking out Patrick Sterling's channel. He's got a few videos covering them that are really in depth. But what we can do is we can get sneaky with this property and use some of the preset functions in DaVinci to create that elastic motion that we're looking for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset our properties here, right? So this would be what you would see when you first set your anim curve. So what I would recommend doing if you're working in like a fusion composition or some kind of media file is I would recommend changing the source from transition to duration and then change the curve from linear to easing. Well, all that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna change the out motion of our easing curve from none to elastic. And if I play this forward, <laughs> it's a little drastic, but you can see it kind of bounces back and forth until we get to the end. So the logical follow-up to this is, well, okay, how do I get it to start off screen and then come to rest in the middle? Well, what we can do is we can just change our scale to 0 0.5. This would be our ending X value if we didn't change the offset. So if I play this, Okay, it's gonna come to rest at 0 0.5 and it's gonna take the entire duration of our clip to do so. Let's say I wanted it to start off frame because we can kind of see him here. Well, I would need to change our offset to maybe we could go like negative uh, 0.25. And now what we would need to do is correct this and change our scale to 0 0.5, right? And if I play this, now it's going to come to rest at the middle of our screen. And if that's all that you were looking for, I wish you the best and I hope you have a beautiful rest of your life. But I'm gonna cover a couple of things that will give you a little bit more control with this. Because if we play our animation forward, I mean, we are getting the, the motion that we like, but you don't have a lot of control as is. So what I will say is that when you're using some of the scale and offset properties, I've made this analogy before, but you can kind of think of it as your, uh, what is this, your linear graph equation, y equals mx plus b, where the offset is your b, and the scale is gonna be your slope over here. So if you're trying to get a specific value at the end, you'll need to do a little math to maybe figure out, okay, what do I need to change my scale and offset to so that I can get that value? Now, the other thing that we need to talk about is the time scale and the time offset. These are gonna give us an absolute X value in the end. 
So if I scrub all the way forward, right, our X value, it's not gonna be exactly 0.5 because we're uh, hanging a frame here, but it's pretty dang close to 0.5. Time scale and time offset are relative to the composition length. So what I mean by that is that if I wanted to have a time delay of 20 frames, if I typed in 20, it's never going to play because what I've actually entered is 2000% offset, <laughs> I think, or is it? 200%, it's one of those percent offsets. So, so if I didn't want this animation to start until 20 frames in, what I would need to do is go 20 divided by 150. So let me get the calculator out real quick. 20 divided by one, oops, 150, 0 0.133. So I would go 0.133. And now it's gonna start pretty dang close to frame 20. This is similar to the time scale as well. So if I want it to go twice as fast, I would enter in a two. This will shorten the overall length by half because we are going two times as fast. So that's what this looks like. Okay, and we should end, what is frame 20 plus 75, frame 95, yeah. So we're ending on frame 95. So what you might need to do with this motion is if you're not doing this with keyframes, get your scale and offset all dialed in with where you want it to start and end. And then you might just need to play around with the time scale and the time offset. It might not be an exact science for you. Now, before you guys go on with the rest of your day, let me show you something real quick. Uh, I'm gonna go over to our other example over here and we have this motion where our second text drops down below. If you are curious about how I generated this look, I've got a grain node right here, and then I've got two macros that were developed by fellow DaVinci creators. I will leave links in the description. Uh, one is Mr. Jake Hayden. He is the one who developed the glow that I'm using. And the other is uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mad Resolve. And they came up with this bevel shader. It's, they're both really cool and um, combined together, got this really fun look. So what happens when we don't have X and Y motion and instead we want to rotate something? So you see how it comes almost out of frame and then kind of flops in. So what I did is basically the exact same thing, except I used a DVE no-no. Now, if you never use a DVE node before, uh, they basically fake like 3D camera motion for you without doing the 3D node system. So, you know, you can rotate things in all sorts of fun directions. But what I did is I went to the X rotation here right clicks, uh, modify width, and M curve. I went to the modifiers, and then I changed my source from transition to duration. And then what I did is I went to the beginning because I was like, I want this to appear to where it's almost flush and you can't see it. So I changed this offset to 90. And now I'm changing my scale so that it flips down and it looks like that's gonna be negative 90. So just to check to see if I have the right motion or not, I can hit play and sure enough, this thing is rotating down. So the next thing that I did was exactly what I showed you guys a little bit ago. I changed my curve from linear to easing and then we go down to the out drop down menu and we go all the way down to elastic. Now I can play this back. There we go, we've got our elastic motion. But for this particular example, it was a little bit too slow and I actually wanted to start, uh, I think it was on frame 20 for the video that I used it on. So I changed the scale to be uh, two times and then we can change our time offset value just almost by like scrubbing this forward a little bit until you can see a little bit of motion. So it looks like 0 0.158 is where we're at. And if I play that back, now we get that drop down motion, which is super cool. Now I'm gonna be making a follow up video to this one showing a mathematical way to model the exact same motion. And as always, if you ever have more questions, the Discord is a great place to ask. Catch you guys in the next one.